Chapter 19. Rendezvous. Over breakfast the next morning, Charbonneau asked, So, what do you think of that dog at Muckwaz? Pierre recalled the critter that guarded Muckwaz's wigwam. It reminded him of his own dog, Pepper. He was friendly enough. Charbonneau laughed. I don't mean the one you were petting, he said. I'm talking about the one you ate. Ate? What did you think was in the stew you were chucking down so fast? Remembering the scrawny mutts he'd seen around the Indian camp, Pierre fought the nausea back. Dog! Ugh. Charbonneau nodded. I know it's hard to get used to, but out here everything is tied to survival. You live off what the land offers. Hazelnuts, cattail, root, beaver. It all fills the gut. Dog to the Indians can mean pulling a sled, carrying a pack, or meat on the table. Pierre was still trying to decide if he thought it was right to eat dogs. Wilderness or not, after Charbonneau had excused himself and headed for the fur processing room. Later that morning, Pierre went for a hike on the hill behind the fort. Skirting the edge of the Indian village, he followed a deer trail that ran parallel to the lake. A short while later, he came to a clearing that offered a spectacular view of Superior. Below him, a dozen canoes were rounding Hat Point and racing for the fort. He was staring at the brigade pulling for the fort when a voice startled him. You like Gichigami? He turned to find the pretty girl, Kaniwa, holding a birch bark basket in her hand and smiling broadly. Pierre felt himself blush. You like Gichigami? She repeated in faltering French. For a moment, he thought he was referring to the blueberries in her basket, but when he looked down, she shook her head and pointed towards the lake. Pierre nodded, understanding that Kaniwa was using the Ojibwe word for Lake Superior. Yes, I do, he said. Kaniwa, still smiling, asked, You like quinoa? Such directness shocked Pierre. He wasn't sure what to say. You like Kaniwa? she repeated. Yes, he said, looking into her dark brown eyes. When the canoe race below concluded, Kaniwa motioned towards a berry patch, inviting Pierre to help with the picking. They turned to walk up the ridge. He thought of offering his hand, but before he could make up his mind, she gave his hand a friendly squeeze and led him to the place where the blueberry bushes were thickest. Kaniwa knelt and, working with both hands at once, began to fill her basket. Rolling her fingers through the low bushes, she filled each palm in a single graceful motion and dropped the berries into her basket. Pierre often picked berries with his mother and sister back in Lachine. They always teased him about being a better eater than a picker. When he was little, mother sometimes threatened to limit him to a single piece of blueberry pie if he didn't fill his bucket more and his face less. Today, Pierre tried to pick as fast as Kaniwa, but he ended up with only a handful of leaves. She giggled in a gentle way that made Pierre chuckle at himself. He smiled when she leaned close to him and touched his hair, saying the French word for white, blanc. He shook his head and tried to explain blonde to her, but she only laughed and pushed a huge berry between his lips. He chewed it slowly, savoring the sun-warm sweetness. After they were through picking berries, they walked back to the village together. Though their talk was limited to simple French phrases, Pierre was surprised at how much they could say with only a gesture, gesture or a smile.